Hey YouTube, it's Jordan, aka JP Dillon, your vintage audio nut with another how to surface this video. Today we're looking at a Marantz 2215B, and uh, this video is going to assume that the machine basically turns on and functions, albeit uh, needing some minor maintenance. These machines were made around 1975 to 1977, uh, 15 watts per channel, the 22 indicates the series, the 15 is the wattage per side. Uh, this is a very simple machine. No mid-range control, as you would see on most Marantz's. Uh, the speaker selector is a rotary control rather than push buttons. It doesn't handle as much current. So we're just going to go over the basics of uh, uh, deoxing the controls, setup adjustments, etc. Uh, I don't anticipate this will need much. They're pretty reliable machines. Uh, the higher power ones usually need more attention, but not these so much. So I've got it hooked up to a load and a scope. Let's first see what it does. And let's see, we'll turn this on here. All the lamps are obviously still working. Now on the B series, some of the Bs don't have the stereo indicator running with auxiliary. This one might, but I don't remember. You've got a 700 hertz sign put in, so let's uh, turn up the volume and see what we get. Now we've got a left channel, but no right. That's because my right probe became unhooked. Okay, so that's hooked up now. We still don't have much of a right channel. It's trying. Let's see. That right channel appears to be absent on all modes, more or less. Messing with the uh, tape monitor and stuff doesn't really fix it well. That volume control sure is bad. There we go. Work the volume control, we get it a little bit. It's pretty common. Something you'd see on an older machine like this. Let's uh, crank it up and see if we can get symmetrical clipping, indicating the amplifier centering. Yeah, it's not great. There might be an adjustment for it on some of the lower powered Marantz's there aren't. Okay, so anyway, let's get this thing apart and uh, chemically treat the switches and controls and then I'll show you about replacing lamps and doing setup adjustments. So for the top, as with all Marantz's, except for the 23 series, there are two screws on each side of the middle case. The middle case comes up and then we'll take the bottom off so you can get to all the pots and controls or uh, switches. So let's get to it. All right, so here it is with the covers off. Pretty simple. One thing I found in this machine, I've been in here before. I serviced this in 2008. So the customer that we bought it from bought it here, or brought it here. Um, also, there's another note. I replaced all the lamps. Um, probably because the original ones were dead. Look at that warp lamp housing. I probably changed them out because somebody had put 300 mils in there and warped the housing. Don't do that. These are designed for 200 milliampers. I know the other ones are brighter, but they kill the machines. Lamp housing. Uh, so very likely I did all the services back then. Very simple machine, as you can see. Lots of air inside. If we look at the bottom, likewise, lots of air. Now the best way to do this is put it on its top and as you can see the vents for the switches down here uh, a little white square looking hole there in the switch is where you put the deox for those very accessible and then as far as getting it into the tone controls you've got an entry point behind those little capacitors there it's hard to see but you can get in there and likewise with the other side, just need to get a longer straw in your deox, like I've mentioned many times before, that it will help you so much. And then obviously there's the uh, rotary selector control volume speakers. So uh, the best way to do that, let's get some deox and get to it. Now this is what I mean by the long straw. It looks crude. 
that allows me to get into places that the stock four inch straw doesn't do or five inch straw so I save them up and I bridge them together and I need two hands to do this but you get the idea of where the extension will go well down into where I need to get to so I can get the uh, chemical into the controls and stuff without making it such a pain in the rear so I'm going to deox put deox on all these switches and then work them all okay so this hopefully this gives you a little bit better view I used to be kind of sparing with this stuff, but it seems like the old controls and stuff are requiring more of it. Whatever method works best for you for getting it in there, so be it, but I do like the straw extension idea. Seems to work very well. So we got everything in there. Just start working them through their range. Get the contact cleaner worked in there. I usually do it about 30 to 50 times. It does help that they're kind of big flat knobs. I could just run my finger along it and rotate it through its positions. Input selectors not so much. Arthritis in your hands doesn't help either. Let's get this up so you guys can see it a little better. Now, if the machines show signs of corrosion, like it's lived near the ocean, in addition to the D5 cleaner, you may wish to make an application of S5, which is shield, which may prevent you from having to take the thing apart every year and clean it. But that's just my opinion. So let's work the buttons. Okay, now last but not least is the famous feeder control for the balance. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. At the back of the control, I'm not sure if you can see that. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Um, let me grab the uh, camera from the little stand thing I have. Back in there, I'm going to try to zoom in so you can see it. You see the little rivet holes there? Come on, focus. There we go. Let's try and rivet holes there and up there. You can get the cleaner in there and then work the control back and forth. But I need two hands to do that. So pause while I finish that and then we'll turn it back on and see what it behaves like now. All right, so now that we got that done, let's see what it does now. Wow, still cruddy. It's only at that lower end of the volume control. Let's work it a little more. It 
Sometimes you just have to be persistent. Yeah, that's still bad. All right. So when you see them really shitty like this, try an application of the shield after the D5. And if you want to know what that looks like, assuming I still have some, that's shield. That's the S5. Works really well. So let's try an application of that and see what happens. Alright, let's see now that we've done the shield application. Yeah, that's a lot less pissed off. It's a nice smooth range. Turn down the sensitivity a little. No dropouts anymore. Good. And before it clips, we're doing about, about 30 volts peak to peak. So about maybe 12 volts RMS, something like that. I'm kind of curious. Let's see what it's really doing. Well, hell, I was actually pretty close. 11 volts RMS. So uh, 11 squared, 122, uh, I keep bumping the terminals off there, 122 divided by 8, da, 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 da. yeah, let's figure it out, there you go, 122 divided by 8, 15.25 watts per channel continuous out, so it's doing what it's supposed to. All right, let's see how the radio is. But before we do that, you wanted to know about the setup adjustments on this. There's only one, just for bias. The two test points are those little loops down there on the emitter resistors. You want some alligator clips, trust me, don't slip, you'll blow it up. Get some alligator clips and clip between those two points. Let's do that now. Okay, so with this hooked up to the test points, you're supposed to be getting between about 25 to 30 milliampers, or 30 millivolts across the resistor pack, which we're getting. And I just measured the other side too, and it's the same. If you need to adjust it, the pots are right there. Watch your meter as you adjust them. Turn them slowly. If you get any kind of erratic measurement during the adjustment, stop. The pots are bad. Replace them. If you run over a dead spot on the carbon trace, the bias will go through the roof. You'll over-bias the output transistors and blow up the amplifier. So if you ever get any sort of erratic readings while adjusting them, stop, replace the pots, and then uh, set the pot about mid-range and go from there. Even at maximum, uh, the maximum setting, it's only about 70 milliamp uh, millivolts across the emitter, which is high, but not enough to blow it up. Uh, so, again, if you get dead spots while adjusting, stop and replace the pots and do it again. So now, we can get to the radio. Here's my test pilot. It's a multiplex signal with the right channel only, coming from my uh, SoundTech 1000 here. And even turning it up, you can see that the stereo separation is awesome. Let's turn it down here. Starts to get a little noisy, mono. Okay. Sensitivity is pretty good. Not worth aligning. Detector still on alignment. Sounds pretty good. All right. So now if you were gonna replace the lamps in this thing, there's one screw here on the left side for the main housing, and there's one screw over here for the right side, which will give you access to your five, eight volt, 200 milliampere fuse lamps. Use that rating. 
Uh, the next one's a bit tricky. When you take this screw out, the pulley will want to come with it. So make sure it doesn't get slack or you'll destring the tuner and then you'll have a real nightmare on your hands. After you loosen that screw, both this and the lamp housing will come out. There's a sixth 200 milliampere 8 volt lamp there. Uh, there's this guy here, which is an 8 volt 50 milliampere stereo indicator. And there's an 8 volt 60 milliampere 5 millimeter uh, dial pointer inside of here. There's two clips, undoes, you just do that. Talk to Dwojo, D W O J O, for all of your Marantz lamp needs. Going to give a shameless plug there to Dave Warzanowski. He's a Marantz guy, and he does lamps for Marantzes. And he does a damn good job. And the original color temp and everything looks great. Um, don't know if he does vellum replacement yet, but you might ask him. He also has things like reproduction screws, knobs, feet, etc. Look him up. I think he has a website, dwojo.net or some such thing like that. It's been a while since I've been there. So this thing's all ready to go. Uh, I'm going to put the cover and cases back on it, and it's going to find a new home. But uh, hopefully that will show you how to service your Marantz 2215B in the basic sense. Hope you enjoyed the video. More to come soon.